Ladies and gentlemen, here I have a cage with green veined whites. This beautiful insect is a green veined white butterfly, also known as Pires napi. Admittedly, it is not the world's most colorful butterfly. It's mostly plain yellowish white. It's also one of the most common and widespread butterflies in the world. However, there is one advantage to these butterflies. They are really easy to breed. That's the advantage. Most species of cabbage white butterflies are. If you have never managed to breed butterflies before in captivity and you want to get started with your first species, breed some of the cabbage whites. The species you are about to see in this video is also a perfect beginner species and if you want to learn how to breed butterflies I re greatly recommend them. So follow my instructions wisely in today's episode of Butterfly Cycles, my online web series in which we breed butterflies. We try to get them from egg to butterfly to egg, completing the whole life cycle. Let's start the intro. The green veined white, Pires napi. Ladies and gentlemen, cabbage white butterflies are probably among the most common and widespread butterflies on planet Earth. Especially in any temperate climate, you will see thousands of them in a typical summer. They are worth studying. So these butterflies are old, I've been raising them for a few weeks, but I'm wondering is it possible for them to lay eggs in captivity? I've been growing cabbage. You're probably not surprised that the food plant that they lay eggs on is cabbage, considering their name. So I'm gonna put the cabbage in this enclosure and see if any of them are willing to lay eggs. Oh, there we go. Now what you are going to do next is you're going to leave the cage with butterflies in a sunny place. Make sure they don't overheat, however. This species does become really active in sunlight. Mm -hmm. 
Make sure they have access to food. I am feeding them cotton swabs that I soaked in honey water or sugar water. And these butterflies right here are drinking. I will show you how to feed the butterflies more extensively later into this video. But first I need to uh, get eggs for the first generation. Gravid females will immediately land on the host plant once they are ready to lay eggs. This is what it looks like when a butterfly is laying eggs. She will sit on the plant and curve her abdomen around to touch the plant. Each time she does this, she lays a few, few eggs on the leaves. Here's another female about to lay eggs. These butterflies often lay between 40 to 100 eggs, if they are kept alive for a long time. Personally, I don't have the ambition to breed that many. Once they have laid enough eggs, I will release the females. few days later so about one week later it's time to see what all of this has uh, resulted into I see that some of the butterflies have now died from old age but it's okay I'll show you why I think that's okay if you take care of them well actually these butterflies can live for uh, up to one or two months. I actually, I'm not sure actually what the maximum lifespan is. I'll have to find out later. Anyway, let's have a look. Snails are eating this cabbage which explains the holes and to be honest it annoys me greatly because this cabbage is food for caterpillars not for freaking snails. Anyway, we got a little update because when we zoom in yeah, do you see these tiny green little things, so these are the eggs. The eggs of Pyrrhus Napi. And here we see one of them. And here we see another egg. Maybe I should add arrows in post-production. I'm not sure we'll see about that. Uh, can you see that? Like these are all tiny little eggs though. That's great, isn't it? And here on the cabbage we see several eggs in a row that have been laid here. Ain't that great? Well, I think it's great. Let's see the underside of these leaves. Oh my god, guys. There are so many freaking eggs. How many eggs are this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Nine eggs just on this leaf. It's hard to see, right? Because they're small, but uh, this is some promising stuff, guys. This is... This is great. More eggs. Just look at that. Guys, what do you think? 
Huh. So I guess we're gonna have a lot of uh, babies. How do we feed the butterflies? Well, I promised to explain it. Let me show you. It doesn't look like much because the eggs they lay on the cabbage are very small. But I think that we have about a hundred eggs already. That's pretty insane. Butterflies are still alive. So, uh, I'm gonna see how much they can lay essentially in one lifetime. It's gonna be a fun challenge. I'm excited. Several days later, the eggs hatched. Guys, cheers, it's summer. I have a nice um, update for you all. Let's see. Because I noticed something today. And it's gonna require me to make a close up. Now, spoiler alert, you probably already know, but I'm gonna show you. In order for today's reveal, well, you guys already know, let's be honest. We have to turn around the leaf and zoom, zoom. And what we see here, I'm asking you guys, can you see those pale white little things, those maggoty little things? I probably don't have to tell you what they are, but these are the caterpillars who have just decided to hatch who have just decided to come out of their eggs I'm not even sure how old these are so these could be maybe one or two days old I didn't even see them yesterday they could have literally just come out of their eggs but it's the start of a butterfly breeding project, project for sure absolutely uh, that's pretty cool. These um, white little maggoty things here, yeah, they're gonna grow into the beautiful butterflies that you saw at the beginning of this video. The species is Pyrus napi. You've seen them in the intro. So it's not gonna be a big surprise what the butterfly looks like. You've seen it in the beginning of this video. But it's gonna be nice to walk you through the life cycle and the biology of this species. Oop, that was too much zoom. Controlling the camera can be hard. Yeah, see that little white little thingy there right there? That spear is nappy. Guys, here's more of them. Can you see them? If we zoom in, you'll see some of the caterpillars who are over a day old. They, oops, again, too much zoom. Controlling the zoom, it's hard. These caterpillars here are greenish, as you can see. These have already eaten, so when the caterpillars start eating from the plant, I guess, I guess the green plant matter inside of their gut, it colors them up. Oops. But it also makes them grow in size. You can see these are slightly bigger than the small ones I just showed you. So maybe they are one or two days older. Which means that they are bigger, because caterpillars grow insanely fast. Like that's their whole biology, is to grow really fast. That's what they do. Um, I'm quite happy. Hopefully it's the beginning of something new. Something cool. The life cycle of a butterfly. Haven't done much butterflies lately, so this is going to be a welcome change. I've mostly been rearing moths last year. Oops, again to resume. Yeah. That's really cool though. Now you can see how small they really are when they just come out of their eggs. So yeah. Anyway. I think we have to wait for a little bit. Uh, you don't want to disturb it too much. The eggs are vulnerable. Sometimes if you touch them, the eggs can fall off. So maybe we should wait. But yeah, it's looking fantastic. It's looking great. Here's the eggs. A few days later. 
Leave it or not, folks, but this cabbage is gonna get decimated, destroyed. It's gonna get completely eaten. It's hard to imagine because the caterpillars right now are super small. But they grow really fast and once they grow big, they can eat several leaves of cabbage per day. This is not enough. I'm gonna have to grow more cabbage or buy it from a supermarket provided there's no pesticide. It's gonna be a challenge to raise this many. It's hard to believe it because of their small size right now, but trust me, they will become big and voracious. Some of the original butterflies started to die of old age. It's sad, but it happens. Insects don't live very long and they were already old. The butterflies will live on in the next generation. Yeah, they were already old when I started the video. The next generation will live longer on camera. This is what the caterpillars already look like in a crazy short time. Whoa! I didn't check them for just a few days and they had already doubled or even tripled in size. Yeah, the caterpillars of this butterfly grow so fast. I literally can't keep up with filming them. No wonder that gardeners hate them. They eat so much in a short time. Alright guys, here are some of the caterpillars that I could find. Can you see them? This is just a small amount of them. But as you can see, they are really stereotypical caterpillars, honestly. Really standard looking green worms. They are not fully grown. I think most of them are live stage. Four. But we are getting a little bit close, at least. So that's good. Very cool. Let's put the green spaghetti back here. So from egg to pupa, this species takes about three to four weeks. But if it's cold or chilly, maybe up to five weeks. Temperature affects their growth and warmth makes them grow faster. Therefore, it's variable. Fascinating. And then I had a big problem. They eat all the cabbage, all the freaking cabbage, everything, everything. Guys, don't underestimate how much these species can eat. They will decimate the food. They will decimate the food plant until it's gone. So I had to get cabbage from the supermarket. Guys, the rate at which the caterpillars eat is terrifying. Um, 
I was checking them today and I found that they've eaten the entire cabbage. Oh my god. So what do we do now? Thankfully I've been growing a second one. I like to be prepared. But uh, this is my last one. I don't know how long it's gonna sustain them to be honest. I'm afraid that uh, after this I'll have to think of other solutions. Oops. That is a little bit crazy if you ask me. Now you can understand the frustration of gardeners. Like it or not, these butterflies are considered commercial pests for their ability to destroy commercial crops like cabbage, broccoli, but also others. Oh, let me get a nice close up here. My camera has the habit of focusing on the background instead of the caterpillars. But yeah, there you go. It's a lot of caterpillars, eh? This butterfly is a beginner species and they really need basic things such as a little bit of warmth, food and cabbage. But if I had to give one big tip, it's this. Please make sure you have an adequate supply of cabbage. I consider myself to be an experienced breeder, even if I say so myself, but even I made a miscalculation. I miscalculated how much they can eat. Ideally, you don't want to run out of food, since then the caterpillars can risk starvation. The amount of cabbage they eat is insane, so I recommend you grow several large cabbages. Guys, these caterpillars have eaten me out of house and home, but they're looking healthy for it. Ew, don't do that. So soon they'll have even more cabbage. Decided I will put the cage here on its side, just like that. This way I can place in the new cabbage that I've been growing. And next to that I can place the old cabbage. And this is so the caterpillars can walk from the old one to the new one and find the new food themselves, hopefully. Yeah, there you go. Eventually what will happen is they will grow hungry due to the lack of food and they will start wandering looking for new food and that's when hopefully they will find a new plant that I just provided them. Let's hope this will work. I think so. It should work. And then we check back a few days later. Are these intermissions really necessary? I could just skip the video. People know it's a few days later. I don't have to explain it to them, but I need to force my filthy little face into the video because I'm the influencer who I'm the creator god and you are the subscriber follower cattle. Her, now you need to see my face. Oh, it's Bart Coppens. Oh, it's Bart Coppens face. Oh, he's so cool and famous on YouTube. Yeah, he controls the show. He runs the show. Ooh, Bart Coppens, Bart Coppens, Bart Coppens, Bart Coppens, Bart Coppens, Bart Coppens, Bart Coppens. No, really. These segments where I say a few days later, is it really necessary? It's not. It's pointless. It's absolutely pointless, but you're watching it. I need to interject. Interject with my annoying presence, with my annoying face. Stop talking, Bart. Stop talking. <laughs> the video where cry about it what you gotta do i can do what i want do, do, do. it's my youtube channel not your channel it's my channel oh yeah <laughs> no really a few days later let's see what happens guys we do have a little emergency because it looks like 
caterpillars have started eating everything, including the new cabbage. Let me show you. So, as you can see, most of the food plant here has been devastated and decimated. There's a few pathetic leaves left. They are chewing on, but that's about it. Thankfully, I have some red cabbage from the freaking supermarket. They'll have to eat that for now. It's an emergency solution, but it will work if I give them some fresh cabbage every few days. I don't like to do this method, but my hands are tied. I can't grow more plants right now. I don't like using this method, but let's see if it works. They should start eating it soon. I mean, cabbage is cabbage, right? They should not care where it comes from. I hope they eat all this stuff. Good news is the caterpillars are really fully grown and starting to pupate. How do I know? Because here on the edge of the container you can see many caterpillars here. And these are actually pupating as you can see. So when they sit like this. It means they're ready to transform as some have already pupated. Here in the back, believe it or not, is a pupa. So this butterfly here has already pupated. In about two weeks is gonna turn into a butterfly. That's good. I wonder if there's more of them. Ah, there are. Take a look at that. So people, these are the first images of the pupa. They seem to be green in this case. Okay, and I think we have a lot of them soon. Here in the back of the container there is more. So that's good. Maybe later we should take a look at them and see how many we have. So here are some of the first ones ladies and gentlemen. I think I'm about to have, literally about to have hundreds of them, but we'll have to count that once they're all pupated. But here you go. I think these pupa only take about two weeks before they turn into butterflies, so we're getting very close. It may even take less than that if it's really warm. Let's put them back for now. Thankfully the pupa of these butterflies don't take long. If you keep them warm, they can come out as soon as two weeks or three weeks if it's less warm. Let's say around room temp, it's about three weeks. The pupa can hibernate, so don't be surprised if you are breeding these late in the year and the butterflies are not coming out. In that case, you'll have to store the pupae cold because they will hibernate, but that didn't happen. Just a few weeks later, I had a lot of butterflies coming out. Let's start. Well, now they are eating red cabbage from the supermarket. I hope it was not sprayed with pesticides, but I think they are fine. All right, guys, so finally all my caterpillars pupated. But not just that, the pupa are already developing, so maybe in a few days I will find my first Pyrrhus napi butterflies down here. Come here. Oh wait, I have to take the camera. Like that. Anyway. <clears throat> so here's the situation. If we look here at the cage walls, we already see there's a lot of pupae here. But you've seen that, we know the drill by now. Lots of the caterpillars have pupated. Now this looks like a complete wasteland. The food plant was completely decimated. I think there's even a few caterpillars left feeding on the remains. But most of it is just gone. And if we take a look, we see just also loose pupae scattered here. Oh, 
though. But what's interesting is some of them are actually kind of close to developing. For example, for example, this one up here, can you see it? We can tell by the way it's coloring up. You can see the outline of the butterfly, the wing veins and its eyes. Through the pupa, can you see it? So this butterfly is nearly fully formed. And I would say maybe in two days or less, it's gonna come out. So we are actually quite close to completing the whole life cycle. Interesting. Here on the side is also a butterfly pupa that's very developed. You can practically see its wings through the pupa. That's crazy though, isn't it? Whoops, too much zoom. Zoom out. See this guys, this is a fully formed pupa. So give me a few days and we already have the first butterflies in here. More of them are on the floor. These are not developed yet. This place is a bit of a mess because of the excessive eating of the caterpillars. There's even mushrooms growing here now. Probably growing well on the mess the caterpillars made. Have a whole ecosystem in here. That's a bit strange, isn't it? Anyway. Look at this moon landscape. Abandoned, deserted. Everything has been eaten. Interestingly, some of the cabbage is starting to recover. And it's growing new leaves. So there you go. It's a tough plant. Maybe it will be ready for more egg laying. And much to my surprise, there's still some of the last caterpillars on it. As you can see right here. These caterpillars have less competition from their brothers and sisters now because they all pupated. So whatever food there is left, they have it for themselves. Here's another caterpillar. These are some of the slowest growing caterpillars that are left behind. Here more pupa in the back. Great. That's easy so far, isn't it? Yep. Few days later. Folks, I was checking the cage today and I don't have to spoil it for you. If you look in here, you'll see we already have a lot of butterflies. So in one day, we had like a dozen of butterflies come out on the same day. Can you see it? Let me show you. Yo! More and more butterflies are coming out every day. Awesome! Can you see how one of the females is curling up her abdomen and holding it in the air? It's called the mating refusal position. It means the female is not interested in the males near her. If she holds up her abdomen like this, it makes it impossible for the, male, for the males to mate with her. The more you know. Now immediately I'm going to convert the enclosure back into a butterfly cage. I'm gonna do that by taking one of these tubs out. There you go. Don't worry, all the pupa that are in there, I will put them back in the cage. But this cage, it needs to be... I need to put it upright, like this. Like it was originally, remember? At the start of the video, like this. So, and there's no room or two pots of cabbage in here. There you go. Now it's a proper butterfly enclosure. All the pupae that are in here, I will have to collect them and place them back into the enclosure. We don't want to leave them out. So it's just a matter of finding all the butterfly pupae that are in here, which are quite a few, honestly. 
Here's one of them. Can you see it? So just you can use your hands if you're careful. Okay, don't crush them. Just gently take them off. It's quite possible to do so. Here more pupae. Taking all the pupae. There you go. There you go. There you go. Another pupa. And here on the cabbage, there's more of them too. This may take a while. There's also some here on the sides that I need to take off. I'm afraid we have managed to raise a ridiculous amount of them. This is just the ones I collected from here. And apart from this, we have even more. So we're gonna take these and place them in here so they can metamorphosize into butterflies in this enclosure. Wow. Not to mention there's already a lot of pupa in here, for example here on the cage walls. Here's a lot of the caterpillars who pupated. What you want to do is you want to place the cage in the sun in your garden. Now if you do this make sure they have some shade in their enclosure so they don't roast in the sun. Otherwise they will overeat. But just like this will suffice. All right, these caterpillars are growing steadily. Of course, it's nothing too impressive yet. They are still less than a week old, but their appetite is starting to increase rapidly. Make sure you have enough food plants if you ever want to breed Pyrus species. I want to feed the butterflies, I have an easy technique for that. First, you need a cotton wool, a cotton swab, like this. <clears throat> then you place it on top of their enclosure. Second of all, what you do is you get honey, honey bee honey, and you place it all over the cotton swab, just like that. Then you fold it in half, so it doesn't drip out. Next thing you do is you need to add water. So I'm spraying it with water, so the honey will dissolve, and it will soak it up, the honey water. It's important to add water because they need hydration too. They if you give them pure honey, they will die. Honey is just food. They also need water. So there you go. Maybe I should just take the cap off and just use the water itself. Yeah, that's more efficient. So the honey is going to dissolve and it's going to saturate this um, cotton swab thing and they will actually drink from it. They can drink from it through the cage. They have a proboscis. They can basically stick through the cage. Now I don't think they are going to feed right now because the butterflies have just been born and usually they are not hungry the first f one or two days. But we'll see, we have to f always offer them food so if they are hungry they have the opportunity to feed. Now guys, as you can see one of them is actually feeding straight away. Can you see its proboscis there? Maybe if we zoom in a little bit more. Oh, it just stopped drinking. But you could see how it was extending. Yeah, do you see that? It's proboscis. Um, I guess it's not very hungry. When butterflies are born, they don't need to eat for a while. But it did eat a little bit. Did you just see that? So there's the proof it works. from the cotton swab here. My! We've done really well for ourselves, haven't we? Oh, I love this. It's the fruits of our labor. We did this. This butterfly just came out of its pupa and it's currently still drying its wings. 
This is an opportunity to film it up close while it's sitting still. So cute. It's quite difficult to hold butterflies on your finger. Most pieces fly away. This butterfly just came out of the pupa and is still drying its wings, however. In this moment, it's okay to touch them, carefully and very gently. So let's have a close look at this pretty species. Their color reminds me of butter. I wonder if that's where the name butterfly came from. My little babies, second generation, can you believe it? There's a lot of flies also for some reason. They probably like to grow in the potted soil. There could be fungus nuts. Oh well, I think they're harmless. Just look at that. It's the ladies and gentlemen here in the back. I'm. I caught two butterflies mating. That's a rare moment because even if I breed butterflies, I usually don't catch them mating. Just because butterfly matings are very short. Now, if you're a fan of my channel and you watched my other videos, you see that I breed moths in captivity most of the time, more often than I breed butterflies. And I filmed several matings of moth species in captivity. But for butterflies, sometimes I just don't see it happen, even if I have several generations. I think matings, they tend to last maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Of course, it depends on the species. Some species do it really quickly, some do it really slowly. Pretty sure some species take hours and some take five minutes, but as a generalization for most species, it seems to last quite short. So, oops. And actually the parents of these butterflies, the parental generation, I never saw them mate as well, despite the fact that we got eggs, we got caterpillars. I mean, you saw me raise the whole life cycle. You saw me, you saw how the adults laid eggs at the beginning of this video. And I never showed you any, any mating because I never saw any. So this is the first time. That's cool. It's cool. I can show you finally. It's also part of the life cycle. So the male and female are stuck together by their abdomen. So how is the rest doing? Ooh. Yep. That's a lot of butterflies. More and more come out every day. Look at that. I'm happy they are strong. They're healthy. I think they're actually pretty. A lot of people don't like them because they are white and they say, well, I want colorful butterflies. I want red and blue and yellow. I don't want white. White is boring. No, I disagree. I think they're pretty cool. Like they have subtle color patterns and stuff. They have a yellowish underwing on the underside. You know, it's a, it's a charming little species. I like them. But then again, at heart, I'm a biologist. I don't breed them for their appearance, but also I like the substance. I like learning and observing. So it's not just, oh, I'm Bart and I want to pre breed the prettiest and rarest butterflies for YouTube. No, I'll breed the colorless ones and common ones as well, because they are just as much worthy of our attention as any other species. I don't like discrimination based on appearance when it comes to butterflies. You see this everywhere in wildlife conservation, like stuff like pandas, 
they are very cute. They get, they get all the funding, they get millions of dollars in funding and conservation. While some ugly moths who are brown, yeah, nobody cares if those go extinct. Of course, I am not implying that this species needs conservation, they don't. It's probably the, one of the most common butterflies in the world and invasive in many places. So there you go. What I'm saying is worth looking at the obscure, it's worth looking at the common and the small and the perhaps to most people less exciting stuff. And if you like knowledge, if you like learning, then everything is going to be exciting. But you don't have to be picky. I like all the life cycles. Every species has something different to offer that I can learn from. Looks like they're really happy today, really active. Seems that down here more of them are coming out. Pretty sure this is a fresh one that's just sitting here to dry its wings because it just came out of the pupa. I like it when this happens because the butterflies, they sit still for several hours when they still have, oops, sorry, when they still have to dry their wings. And that allows us to make a sneaky close up, which is otherwise difficult to do. Because butterflies, they don't like to sit still for very long most of the time. Look at his green little eyes, that's really cute though. That's so cool. That is so cool. I mean, guys, what do you think? Do you think it's pretty? I think it's pretty. Yes, it's not a blue morpho butterfly, I understand. It's not a monarch butterfly with orange. It's just a green veined white. But look at it. It has its own beauty, doesn't it? Oh, the cabbage has not recovered yet from the massive feeding that happened, but I see there is already some freaking eggs being laid on the cabbage. Oh no, these butterflies are voracious and really fast and prolific. Oh, these are also eggs. We're gonna be in trouble. No way. Yeah, I'm gonna need to ha get more cabbage or I'm gonna have to release the butterflies because this is not enough to feed even one caterpillar. Oh my God. These are, they breed so fast. Now guys, when it comes to breeding and mating, these butterflies are insanely unstoppable. They are so easy to breed. And if you want to start breeding butterflies and you're ready for your first species, I recommend uh, cabbage whites of any species, but this species, Pyrus napi, is very friendly. Just the mating, rearing the larvae, etc. It's all very easy. Now I know some people are gonna say, Bart, they are pest animals, don't breed them. My answer to that is shut up. If they are, of course, if these butterflies are not native to your country, don't think about importing them, that would be very unwise. Don't import something to your country that is a pest if it's not native. But these butterflies have been spread all across the globe. Um, raising a dozen of them is not gonna have any impact whatsoever. There are billions in the environment. And of course, we don't break the law. You make sure you breed butterflies legally and ethically. So that's what we do on this channel. Everything that we do is legal and ethical. And I think it's a good species to practice with if you aspire to breed butterflies in your life. So why not? If they are already native to your region, all you do have to do is grow cabbage and find a female butterfly who will lay eggs and put her in a cage with the cabbage, make sure to feed her and that's it. And then you can literally farm thousands. Okay, well that's quite ironic. <laughs> I guess somebody came to say hi from the wild. Yeah, 
No, I didn't put that butterfly there. I noticed butterflies like to sit on the cages sometimes to warm up. Maybe because it has a white surface and white reflects a lot of light, so maybe they can absorb the heat very well. I don't know, just making up some stuff. Just a theory, I like to overanalyze everything. Hi butterfly, you're on YouTube. You're not supposed to be in this video, you know. It's not about you. Yeah, this is a red admiral. They're very common in the Netherlands. Uh, they're not supposed to be a part of this video. But why not? It's kind of really a cute coincidence, isn't it? Anyway, see if I can pick it up. Probably not. It's really challenging to pick up wild butterflies. Whoop, nope. There you go. They are chewing big holes in the leaves. I recommend everyone to breed cabbage white butterflies, really. They are some of the easiest butterflies ever to breed. All you need is a big supply of cabbage and a cage.
Well guys, today I found several butterflies who died from old age. Rest in peace guys. Yeah, they are dead. Don't worry. We still have some of them left. Let's take a look. Sorry for that. Even though I'm a 30 year old man, I behave like a child sometimes. Do you know that feeling? Anyway. This is their enclosure. I don't care if some of them fly away anymore, to be honest. It's almost the end. We have too many butterflies anyway. But as you can see, well, yeah, yeah. hey, stupid. You know, if you fly away right now, you're free, right? Do you, you realize that? No, you don't realize that, do you? So you're just gonna sit there, not realizing you could escape. Well, that's fine by me. Whoop, here go some of them. Be free, my friends. Some of them don't even have the strength to fly away because these butterflies have grown really, really old, as you can see. I think they are all about to expire and die from old age, unfortunately. It's very unfortunate if this happens, but it's nature, you know, you can't prevent it. Sadly, butterflies do not live for very long. I feel bad for them, really, but they've done a wonderful job at reproducing. So this is what a very old butterfly looks like. And so after many months we are left with some very old butterflies. And when I say very old I mean it. Like in the wild they don't even get this old. As you can see, some of them have damaged wings. That's because they are old and when butterflies grow old their wings deteriorate. As you can see. But they're still alive and going strong, I guess. Trying to fly with their old kind of damaged wings. Well, some butterflies are in better condition still. Like this one is still in a decent condition. Or even though you can see some signs of old age. Such as missing scales and such. Yeah, they lost a lot of color and brightness. But it's what happens here. It's the circle of life. Now, if we look here on the cabbage, we see there's a lot of eggs that have been laid on it. But uh, there's also holes being chewed in it. And I think we can all guess why or how this happens. So here's the caterpillars of generation number two. Some of them already growing old. This must be in star three at least. So basically the life cycle is about to happen all over again. It's already happening. Here you see eggs, but also a caterpillar. Whoops, too much zoom. Hello there, Mr. Caterpillar. Are you chilling? I bet you are. Silly caterpillar. Some of the butterflies are still in a great shape. I suppose these are the ones who are born the last. The butterflies who were born first, well, they already died of old age. But the ones who grew slower or took longer to turn into butterflies are still living out their life. Cute. No matter what you think about cabbage white butterflies, you have to admit it is a cute and charismatic species. It is. Remember the name, people, the green faint white. And you've seen now the whole life cycle on my channel, which is a win. Look at that white little cutie, eh? Duh, adorable. At night they do have the habit of sleeping together in these small groups like they are doing right now. Right now it's evening and they are about to go to sleep. They always do it in these tiny aggreg aggregations. I guess you can call it roosting behavior. It's not uncommon in butterflies actually. But it's hard to document it sometimes. In captivity it's easier to document it. It's kind of hard to focus on these creatures with the camera because they have the same color as the background. So, the 
camera is not fully cooperating. Come on, see? Doesn't really know where to focus. Stupid. Camera. Ah, oh, there you go. This one's still looking alright. Pretty cute. Anyways, the main thing I wanted to show off is that we have caterpillars. And with that the life cycle is completed in my opinion. Like, I don't see any reason to keep them around at this point. As for the remaining butterflies people, <coughs> I'm gonna set them free. Because uh, I've proven to you that we can breed them in captivity. I filmed for you all the life stages. I've shown you the whole biology. And I have more babies than I need or can handle right now. So it's selfish to keep them around. So it's time to give the remaining butterflies their freedom. Starting with you. Goodbye friend. And secondly starting with you. A goodbye friend. Thirdly I'm going to start with you. Goodbye, friend. Number four. Goodbye, friend. Number five. Goodbye, friend. Number six. Ooh, it's an old one. Goodbye, friend. Number seven. Goodbye, friend. Number eight. Goodbye, friend. Number nine. Goodbye, friend. Number ten. Goodbye, friend. Number eleven. Number eleven. Goodbye, friend. Number 12, we had more than I thought. Hmm, goodbye, friend. Even though your flying skills were not up to par. Was that all? Yeah. I think that's the end. Oh, wait, we have one more. We have one more sitting on the cabbage. Number 13. Goodbye, friend. Hey, he's coming back. Oh, no, he isn't. This was the life cycle finished. In here is the second generation of the caterpillars. And that's the end. I release all my butterflies. Oh. Number 14. Goodbye, friend. Today we are talking about the green faint white or Pyrus napi. This fascinating little butterfly is often overlooked because it is so widespread and common. In my opinion the purpose of breeding insects is to learn more about them. So after every life cycle I like to have a little educational presentation so that we know everything about the species that we watched today. Today I feel like keeping this presentation short but sweet. So let's go over the basics. This species is very widespread in Europe, but it's found quite far, all the way up to the Far East, into parts of temperate Asia, and it's even been recorded in parts of India, Japan, Korea and China. Parts of the Middle East, down into Iran or Turkey, Kazakhstan and Mongolia, and pretty much all the countries in Europe. We can see them in North Africa too, such as Morocco and Algeria. Is this species found in America? Some sources say yes, some sources say no. It's a bit complicated. Due to their high diversity and ubiquitous intergenerational polymorphism, the taxonomic status and identification characteristics of many Pyrus species have been very confusing especially the Pyrus, Napix, uh, the Pyrus napi complex and related species. Some sources mention that the species can be found in the United States of America, but other sources contradict this. 
It seems that the species has several sister species in the United States, however, such as Pyrus angelica, Pyrus marginalis, and Pyrus oleracea that are closely related to the European Pyrus napi, and are often treated as subspecies of Pyrus napi. Just where Pyrus marginalis, oleracea and angelica displace one another is still unresolved, with different studies giving somewhat contradictory results. Currently, they are seen as different species, so technically we would have to say that no, Pyrus napi is not found in the United States. But it depends on the shifting definitions of the C species or subspecies of Pyrus napi that belong to the complex of Pyrus napi. This species is actually more rarely a pest, because it actually doesn't really prefer to eat cabbage. Unlike other species of cabbage whites. It's a surprising fact that not many people know. And this video was a little bit deceiving because I forced to make them eat cabbage in captivity. Everyone assumes that each white butterfly is a pest on cabbage, but it's not always exactly true. Pyrus napi rarely lays their eggs on it. Instead, they very much prefer to use other plants from the cabbage and mustard family. Such as hedge mustard, Cicimbrium officinale, garlic mustard, Aliaria petiolata, cuckoo flower or cardamine pratense, watercress or Roripa nasturium aquaticum, charlock or Sinapis arvensis, large bittercress or cardamine armana, wild cabbage or Brassica oleracea, and wild radish, Raphanus raphanistrum. And it is so rarely a pest in gardens or field crops, because it very much prefers wild species of cabbage-like plants. This species also prefers woodlands to some extent, and also moist and humid places such as riverbanks and in wet meadows. In summer the species can migrate a little, and sometimes it can be seen flying in open habitats such as grasslands and heaths in summer but usually they prefer to stay closer to sheltered areas. This is also one of the reasons they are not considered to be pests as much as other species of cabbage whites. Because unlike the other species of cabbage whites, they don't have a strong preference for open areas. The other species do, and thus affect field crops more. This butterfly has one to four broods per year. In most of its range, it seems to have two to three broods, and it produces more broods when summer is very warm. It hibernates in the form of a pupa. Interestingly, it seems to have spring and summer forms. The spring brood has a much more visible wing veins, due to the presence of more dark scales. In this video, we actually raised the summer brood. That's almost the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Sometimes we have a long presentation at the end of the video, but today I kept it a little bit short. I wanted to focus more on the breeding of the butterflies instead of doing an hour-long presentation about their biology. It also really just depends on my mood and how much I have to say about the species that we raised today compared to how much I've already told about them in the past on YouTube. But before we end the show, I do have good news. There are four species of cabbage white butterflies in my home country, the Netherlands. Yeah, I'm a Dutch man. I'm a Dutch person. I live in the Netherlands, born and raised. And there's four species of cabbage white here. First one is the green veined white Pyrus napi. Second one is Pyrus brassica. Fourth one is Pyrus rapai. Fifth, I can't count. I said four, how did I go to five? Err. Let's do it again. The first one is Pyrus napi. The second one is Pyrus brassica. The third one is Pyrus rapai. And the fourth one is Pyrus marni. These four butterflies make up the four cabbage white butterflies that live in the Netherlands. And today we managed to raise Pyrus napi. This leaves three more species that I did not film the life cycle of. 
I have good news. I want to breed all of them. It's my mission to breed all the species that live in my country, at least the cabbage whites, because they are very easy to breed in captivity. I can do it easily. But I need your help. My YouTube channel is permanently demonetized by YouTube. That means that if I upload a video, I don't make any money from it. Zero, nothing, nada. YouTube is not paying me because they say my content is not suitable for advertisers, whatever that means. They never wanted to tell me the actual reason for this. But understandably, this makes it harder for me to make these kind of videos. Not only do they take months to film and produce, because I have to film the whole freaking life cycle, I have to take care of the animals for months, take the camera with me, show you what I'm doing every single day. It also costs time, effort and resources, really. So before we end the video, I want to tell my viewers, if you like the show, if you like my videos, if you appreciate my content, if you enjoy what I do, consider tipping or donating to my channel. There are several ways you can do it. You can do it through PayPal, you can do it through Patreon, where you can buy a subscription. And that's really all that I want to say today. A few dollars helps my channel a lot. I'm a small YouTuber who is often struggling to make so many videos about insects. It's really difficult to do all of this myself. And it's only the crowdfunding and donations that I get from my own viewers that allow me to continue being a YouTuber and to make more videos. Of course, this message is only for those who are willing and able to support me. Okay, help yourself first before you help a random YouTuber. I understand it's difficult nowadays in today's economy. So I'm only asking the people who are willing and able, right? That's all I have to mention. I don't like to bring it up. It sucks. It's embarrassing. But it's how I run this channel, sadly. Hope to see you next time. And now we will play the credits displaying the names of all my wonderful patrons who make my content possible. Let's play them. Of course, we check a few days later. But that's not a problem for you. It's a problem for me. On YouTube, these videos are so short. You don't really see how many days it takes to film stuff like this. Yeah, I spent...